by giving all praises to the Most High, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shai, and the Holy Spirit, which in Hebrew is the Rakak Padash. Double honors to the elders and apostles by the Holy Spirit, who taught us His truth, honors to the brothers, that anybody's bodies live in sacrifice to push the gospel. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, which would be the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians who make up the 12 tribes of Israel. The hopeful elect being one third of these people who are gonna return back to the Most High and receive salvation, while the remaining two thirds of our people be destroyed in judgment. So we back with another lesson through the mercy of Yehovah Bahashim Yehovah Shah. Um, I was watching something the other night and decided to do a little lesson on it. So pretty much what it was, Congress had a hearing concerning UFOs or in, in UAPs. UAPs being an acronym for Unidentified Area Phenomena. Now, when you go up the ranks high enough, these Edomites know exactly what the UFOs are. But, you know, when you go down the ranks, you know, everybody don't know yet. So I'm, I'm guessing they're just trying to figure figure out a way to, to condition the people's mind to, to, the, to the reality of life outside of Earth by the way they speak of it being aliens, extraterrestrials, etc., which we know it will really be the holy angels. But this could be part of Esau's agenda to do some kind of Project Blue Beam, some kind of fake alien invasion. We don't know, but, but we know perfectly well what it is. But I'm going to play a little clip from that hearing and we get into the video. Oh, and the title of this lesson will be these fleshly bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But we're gonna play this video first and we're gonna get it to some more stuff. Their ships uh, being pursued by a UAP. In our previous panel, we had Grush and he had testified to say that some of these were interdimensional beings. Can you speak on that at all? See, they speaking about interdimensional beings. What's the next dimension? It'll be a spirit world. These interdimensional beings being the holy angels. Ma'am, I'm not qualified, I'm certainly as a scientist or otherwise, to speculate points of origin. Um, I looked at everything from a scientific perspective. So if you look at, for example, instantaneous acceleration, which was one of the observables of the program that I belong to, ATIP, um, the human body can withstand about nine G-forces for a short period of time before you suffer negative biological consequences blackouts and ultimately redouts and even death. Comparison, our best technology, the F-16, which is one of this older platform, but one of our most highly maneuverable aircraft, manned aircraft, uh, made by General Dynamics, can perform about 17 or 18 G-forces before you start having structural failure, meaning that the airframe begins to disintegrate while you're flying. The vehicles we're, we're talking about are performing in excess of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 Gs. So are you... I guess, would it be safe to infer that they're living craft? Um, you know, I'm not prepared at this point to stick. So that was pretty much it. Um, we going to play some of this back, and I got a couple screenshots that we going to pull up as well. I thought that was pretty interesting. So we going to run this back. Check this out. And so they're talking about the UFOs, the UAPs, which would be the chariots of the Lord. But check what they say about the G-forces and the acceleration. To ATIP, um, the human body can withstand about nine G-forces for a short period of time before you... So he said the human body can withstand about um, three to four G-forces. Now I got a little video on YouTube that's going to kind of explain what G-forces are. So let's check this out. In fact, if you accelerate at a high enough rate, you could pass out and very possibly die. This is because of what happens to the human body when it experiences G-force, or the unit of measure for acceleration. 
It's based on Earth's gravitational pull. 1g is the force applied to an object by gravity while on Earth's surface. It's also the force that determines how much we weigh. So, simply put, if a human experiences 3g's, they experience a force on their bodies that is three times their weight. We can experience the g-force in different ways. If we accelerate horizontally, like in a car or train, we can experience g-force either front to back or side to side. We can actually withstand quite a bit of g-force when it's hitting us horizontally. It's when things go vertical, which mostly happens only on airplanes, roller coasters, or during space launches, that things get much more dangerous much more quickly. Vertical g-force can be experienced negatively, foot to head, or pop. So that was about it there. So pretty much g-force is, is the force that you feel under acceleration. Now I'm going to pull out this calculator. And Laura Willer, who was able to follow along, So, G-forces would exp the best way to um, describe it. That's what you feel when you're going real fast in the car, real fast take off, or you get in a bad accident, <clears throat> or you on some kind of roller coaster, some kind of ride at an amusement park. You know, it's the feeling that you get when you push back into the back of the seat and you can't move and you feel heavy, that's what G-forces are. So we're going to run, run this back, and we're going to explain a few things. To ATIP, um, the human body can withstand about nine G-forces for a short period of time before you suffer negative biological consequences. Okay, i got to correct myself. He said the, body, the human body can withstand nine G-forces for a short period of time. So... We're going to look at this. When experiencing three G-forces, the body feels three times its normal weight. So G-force is a, it's a powerful force. So, for example, like me, I'm about 155. Under one G-force, that's normal gravity, I'm 155. Three G-forces, I would be 465 pounds. Now, we know that kind of weight and pressure on the body, your bones, the blood vessels, the organs is not healthy. So that's why, like roller coasters, for example, it got the ups and the downs where you experience the G-forces, but it's only for a few seconds because G-forces for an extended period of time, it, it pretty much destroys the body. Now let's finish reading this. The body feels three times its normal weight, causing blood to pool in the lower extremities. So it alters your blood flow, flow, alters your physiology. That's the way that your body and the different organs and systems, systems function, potentially leading to visual disturbances like tunnel vision or gray out, <clears throat> which is loss of color vision and even temporary loss of consciousness, blackout due to insufficient blood flow. So this is just three G forces. You experience it long enough, you'll black out. But again, in the video, he said the human body can withstand about nine G forces. Let's play that back. It belong to a tip. Um, the human body can withstand about nine G forces for a short period of time before you suffer negative biological consequences. In other words, the human body can withstand about nine G forces for a short period of time before you die. Now, my weight, 155 times 9, which would be 9 times Earth's gravity, or G-forces. At 9 Gs, I'd be 1,395 pounds. I won't actually be that weight, but that would be the pressure that would be on my body. And my body will respond to that pressure, you know, that's applied from the G-forces. So... If three G forces would pretty much make you black out, what you think nine G forces would do? You know, there's no body in the world that's thirteen hundred ninety five pounds. You know, body just can't function. It just doesn't work. So pretty much equals death. Now let's move a little forward in this video.
blackouts and ultimately redouts and even death. Comparison, our best technology, the F-16, which is one of this older platform, but one of our most highly maneuverable aircraft, manned aircraft, uh, made by General Dynamics, can perform about 17 or 18 G-forces. Okay, so see that? He said one of the uh, best aircraft at, at, at top speed can perform at 17 to 18 G-forces. Now, I think I got another one. And this is hypothetical, but pretty close. Exposure to 18 G-forces on the human body will have severe physiological effects, including immediate loss of consciousness, significant disruption of blood flow to the brain, vision impairment or loss, extreme strain on the neck and back muscles, potential organ damage, and could even be fatal depending on the duration of the exposure and the individual's physical condition. So pretty much death. So for example, high G-forces in which people die, you could think of like a bad car accident. The car swerve, tip over, slam into a brick wall, and that causes you to what, fly out of windshields, you banging your head against the interior of the car, you go through the windshield. That's what G-forces are. Or pretty much you jumping off the top of a building and landing on the concrete. You experience G-forces. But here again, 17 and 18 G-forces pretty much translates to death. Now, let's take my body weight about 155. Let's, let's multiply that by 18. So under 18 G-forces, which would be in the F-16 fighter jets, if they perform, you know, at maximum speed, my body will feel like it's 2,790 pounds. And it will respond that way too. Uh, organs will bust, internal bleeding, blood vessels will rupture. You may even bleed out of your eyes, bleed out of your ears, bleed out of your nose cough up blood, bones will be crushed under 18 G-forces. Now let's see what he says what 18 G-forces will do to the aircraft, the fighter jets. 16, which is one of this older platform, but one of our comparison, our best technology, the F-16, which is one of this older platform, but one of our most highly maneuverable aircraft, manned aircraft, uh, made by General Dynamics, can perform about 17 or 18 G-forces before you start having structural failure, meaning that the airframe begins to disintegrate while you're flying. So he said, you know, the F-16 can handle uh, 17 or 18 G-forces before they have structural failure, pretty much meaning that the frame of the airplane and, every, and everything um, that was built on that frame would pretty much disintegrate, fall apart, break apart. The best way I can explain it is let's say for those who know what Legos are and you make an airplane out the Legos, if you pick that Lego airplane up, if you move it through the air slowly, the airplane to stick together, you know, you can do that. But if you take that Lego airplane and you swing it with your arm fast as you can, Legos and everything gonna fall apart, go flying everywhere. That's the case with the F-16 fighter jets under 18 G-forces. Now they talk about the G-forces that the human body can handle. Maximum is nine for very short periods. 18 is what the jet fighters is capable of at maximum performance. Now they gonna compare this to the G-forces that they speculate that these so-called UFOs, which are the chariots of the Most High, they're going to talk about the G-forces that they think those are creating when they maneuver and move in the sky. You know, just based upon, you know, observation and, and, and calculations. So check this out which can perform about 17 or 18 G-forces before you start having structural failure, meaning that the airframe begins to disintegrate while you're flying. The vehicles we're, we're talking about are performing in excess of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 Gs. Ooh, we, they say the way that these chariots, uh, they, they got instantaneous movement, instantaneous 
acceleration, meaning when they move, they don't have to build up speed. Like a car or an airplane, they take off at 10,000, 15,000, 17,000 miles per hour. You know, like in the ratings of vehicles, you got how fast a vehicle can go from zero to 60, whether it's three seconds or seven seconds. Well, that don't apply uh, to the chariots. You know, there is no acceleration. They just take off moving at a particular speed and, and there's no build up to it. But again, they say these chariots, just based upon observation and speculation, that it's creating 1,000 to 2,000, probably even more than 3,000 G forces by, by, the, by the maneuvers that they do in the sky. Now, if we take my weight, 155, we're gonna go with the middle number. We're gonna go with, the, with, with 2,000. He said 1,000 to 3,000, we're gonna get the middle number. So at 2,000 G-forces, my body will feel like it's 310,000 pounds. So pretty much under those G-forces, if I, in this fleshy body, was to fly in one of those chariots, the Lord, with the world calls UFO, my body, my body would be totally crushed. I'd be killed in an instant. I'd probably be pulverized. Definition of pulverized is when something is crushed in a small particles. Pretty much, you take a little piece of cereal, put it on the table, and smash it with your fist hard as you can. That's what happens to the body. N nobody can survive those G-forces. And what they talked about is that pretty much this technology that's out there is a threat to humanity. But we gonna play this back and we're going to stop there again. These were interdimensional beings. Can you speak on that at all? Ma'am, I'm not qualified, I'm certainly as a scientist or otherwise, to speculate points of origin. Um, I looked at everything from a scientific perspective. So if you look at, for example, instantaneous acceleration, which was one of the observables. Of the so the, the cherry is, again, instantaneous acceleration. So, the re so six, even going 60 miles per hour, that's safe depending on how you reach that 60 miles per hour. If there's a buildup, a period of acceleration, zero to 60, you get to that 60 miles per hour gradually, it's okay. But if you was to take off moving, even at 60 miles per hour, instantaneously, that will have harmful effects on the body. And keep in mind, that's how the cherry is moved, it's instantaneous movement. Rather be a hundred miles per hour or seventeen thousand miles per hour, because these chariots, they known for being at a standstill and taking off in an instant, shooting down nuclear missiles, which some of those nuclear missiles move from ten thousand to fifteen thousand miles per hour. Chariots be at a standstill, catch it and zap it <laughs> like nothing that I belong to, ATIP. Um, the human example, instantaneous acceleration, which was one of the observables of the program that I belong to, ATIP, um, the human body can withstand about nine G-forces for a short period of time before you suffer negative biological consequences, blackouts and ultimately redouts and even death. Comparison, our best technology, the F-16, which is one of this older platform, but one of our most highly maneuverable aircraft, manned aircraft, uh, made by General Dynamics, can perform about 17 or 18 G-forces before you start having structural failure, meaning that the airframe begins to disintegrate while you're flying. The vehicles we're, we're talking about are performing in excess of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 Gs. So are you, I guess, would it be safe to infer that they're living? Okay, so we get into the main point in a minute. My bad for the long build-up. So I got a video of a woman experiencing g-forces so we we got the effects of the g-forces it pretty much degrades the body you pretty much start to die under these g-forces now check this out the title is aging face of g-force so these g-forces pretty much cause you to age at an accelerated rate 
Now I see this woman, you know, kind of pretty, probably 20s to 30s, but watch what the G-forces do to her. G-forces up here to the top. Watch how the G-forces, just for a few seconds, when she reach, you know, four, five, six, seven G-forces, how it ages her. But then when the G-forces go down, she returns back to normal. See that? So G forces an extended period of time. She looked like a hey, she forty to fifty on her way to sixty. So pretty much the G forces one of the many limitations of this body, and that's why the lesson is titled. These fleshly bodies cannot inherit the kingdom, which I think I'm going to title it. These fleshly bodies cannot enjoy the pleasures of the kingdom of heaven. So we wanted to show that. So. I guess now we'll get into the scriptures. I'm going to play this one more time. Then we're going to get into the scriptures. Teen G forces before highly maneuverable air. Comparison, our best technology, the F-16, which is one of this older platform, but one of our most highly maneuverable aircraft, manned aircraft, uh, made by General Dynamics, can perform about 17 or 18 G-forces before you start having structural failure, meaning that the airframe begins to disintegrate while you're flying. The vehicles we're, we're talking about are performing in excess of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 Gs. Okay, so they best technology can only handle... 17 to 18 G forces before it start falling apart. So if the actual airplane fall apart, what you think it'll do to the body? Which you already said the human body can only handle half of that for a few seconds, which we just saw in the video with the lady. But the thing is, um, if these chariots, these UFOs as they call them, if they perform at a thousand to two thousand to possibly even more than three thousand G forces, which would tear anything to shreds. How strong and how durable are the bodies of the angels that fly the chariots at seventeen thousand, twenty thousand miles? Instant acceleration. Again, the human body can't even handle. 7G forces. The bodies of those angels, they handle thousands of G forces. Showing you the, the sturdiness, the durability, pretty much those new bodies we're going to get, they, they pretty much indestructible. Because again, my body weight 155 at 2000 G forces, and believe the chariots can move a lot faster. They can produce way more G-forces than what Esau speculated, but my body would react and feel like it's over 300,000 pounds. And that's just that my body weight. If your body weight is more, this number would be up. But the bodies of those angels and, and, the, and the vehicles that they drive the chariots, they can handle that force with ease. That's how I wanted to bring this information out. So... Also, I guess we're going to start here. We're going to get Luke uh, 17 and 24. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of one part under heaven shineth unto the other part of heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. So what that say? As lightning, you know, as lightning shine from one part and reaches the other part. You know, that's how light to do. Well, that's the case with these chariots. That's that, that's that instantaneous acceleration. You know, these chariots move as if it's a flash of lightning. 
producing those high g-forces but now we're gonna get here to first corinthians 15 and 50. now this i say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the most high neither the corruption inherit incorruption what's the corruption these fleshly bodies they die they decay they prone to sin and pretty much programmed to do wickedly what's the incorruption um immortality eternal life them glorious bodies so again flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the most high and, you know in the spiritual sense you ask a christian they got part of it right you know these fleshly bodies um are, are not suitable um are, are th these fleshly bodies are not capable um of righteousness really yeah th these fleshy bodies they're not capable of a hundred percent righteousness you know the, the the flesh is pretty much designed to make you go off um also too um again these these fleshy bodies they're not suitable for the kingdom you know the kingdom's supposed to be perfect and these bodies will, will pretty much make you go off every time but even in another sense these fleshly bodies is, is just not designed for the kingdom so we know that you know the elect they could be doing space travel different planets different worlds etc and, and esau could tell you estimate how big outer space is the, the, how many millions and billions of miles which you don't know what he's talking about but if we could be doing interstellar space travel you know, as Esau calls it, we can't do it in these bodies. Because if we in them chariots moving tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of miles per hour, these bodies wouldn't hold up. <clears throat> they'd, they'd be ripped to shreds. So again, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Yeah, that's true, because the bodies are not capable of 100% righteousness, but also these bodies are not suitable for the pleasures that the Most High got in the kingdom. Because the scriptures say, uh, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what the Lord got in store for those who love him. So it's, it's pleasures that we're going to have in the kingdom that we can experience and enjoy in these fleshly bodies. For example flying in the chariots, going to different worlds, possibly going through portals, teleporting to the spiritual world, etc. These bodies are not capable of it. So we're going to go up to verse 39 real quick. It says, all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. And there's another kind of flesh that the Lord got in store for us. That's them new bodies that we're going to get. Because again, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. Pretty much, you know, bodies born here in the earth. And that's why when we go to 40, there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. Celestial bodies going into the bodies of the holy angels. Those in the spiritual realm. And the terrestrial bodies would be those here in the earth. But the glory of the celestial is one. What's the glory of those celestial bodies? You know, such as the holy angels, they indestructible. Eternal life, uh, they, they capable of 100% righteousness. They can't be deceived. They don't get sick. They don't go off. They don't do wickedly. But that's the glory of them, of those celestial bodies. It says the glory of the terrestrial is another. What's the glory of the terrestrial? Your five senses. You can eat, drink, sleep, experience joy in the flesh. You know, um, raise the children. You know, having a wife. That's the glory of the terrestrial body. You know, the angels in the spiritual world don't, don't get to experience the joys and the pleasures that we have here in the earth. Well, we're going to do another lesson on it, but in those new bodies um, that we're going to get, we're going to have the best of both worlds. We're going to be celestial, 
pretty much indestructible, capable of enjoying the pleasures of the kingdom without being tore apart as we would in these fleshly bodies, but we also gonna still enjoy the simple things in life. Drinking wine, having some good food. You know, men is gonna have the joy of, you know, his woman and raising children. But when we go also to 42 through 44, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. So that's pretty much this this uh, upgrade that the Lord got in store for us. It is sown in dishonor, raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, that's flesh and blood. That's why, you know, the human body start tripping under the G-forces. Pretty much stop functioning right. It is raised in power, indestructible. It is sown in a natural body, that's the flesh and blood, which can't enjoy the kingdom. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, there is a spiritual body, but the Lord being us best of both worlds in those new bodies. So we're gonna have all the joys here that we can have in the fleshly bodies. Also, we're gonna have the glory of the celestial bodies of the angels in heaven. So being a what? Can't die, can't be destroyed, can't be hurt. And that's forever, you know, to experience, you know, life in the pleasures of the kingdom forever. But again, the, the, the chariots, what they call UFOs, they perform in excess of 1,000 to 2,000 to 3,000 G-forces. I just wanted to show that in the lesson, you know, to show, okay, after, after the chariots can withstand those G-forces, 1,000, 2,000 to 3,000, okay, well, the, the real question is, what about the what about those that's flying the chariots? That's the bigger, that's, that's, that's the bigger, um, th that's the elephant in the room, really. You know, that's something that can't be ignored. Okay, of course the chariot good at 3,000 G-forces, but you got those that's flying the chariot. They good under 3,000, 4,000 G-forces. You know, that's what can't go unnoticed. And we really just can't comprehend, you know, what the Lord got in store. It's going to be a whole new world. Yeah, it's going to be a whole new world. Just, just stuff we, we can't even imagine. So I'm going to read this again. We're going to continue. It is sown in a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Also, too, um, the chariots creating those kind of G forces, and the holy angels who can withstand those G forces. That's who Esau want to fight against. Now, I'm scared for Esau. You know, just just the different stuff that I hear. You know that they speculate on. Don't really give a damn about Esau, but. You know, Esau about to get towed up. And then the two thirds of our people that don't turn back to you, how about Shimmy, how Y'all going up against that too. Really? And then we did all this talk about G forces, acceleration, body weight, gravity. That's all speculation. You know, that's just hypothetical. We playing with the numbers. But really, G forces and gravity and body weight that could not apply to the holy angels that could not apply to us when we get in those new bodies <clears throat> because this is all you know physics really you know physics in this physical world that's that's why there's a phrase the laws of physics you know there's laws limitations with physics in this physical world well, the laws of physics might not apply to the holy angels, might not apply to those new bodies. I mean, so if that's the case, you know, the holy angels, those new bodies, the chariots, they, they completely unaffected 
by the laws of this world. And really when people talk about the laws of physics, you know, they speak about limitations. Things can only go so fast. Something can only handle so much pressure. It can only this, it can only that. And what's the result? Something breaking, falling apart, or death. Pretty much laws of, the laws of physics implies limitations. But the laws of physics and limitations could not apply to us in the future. Or maybe the laws of physics will apply to us in the future. But the body's just going to be so indestructible, it's just going to be completely unaffected. I think it's both. So, just, just really an eye-opener, you know, the power of the heavens. You know, the power of the holy angels, the, the power that we're going to come into. But um, that's really it for this lesson here. Um, and also, back to this... Um, 1 Corinthians 15 and 50 real quick. I did miss a point. Brethren, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. A Christian will use this and say, you know, you know, flesh and blood is not, is not capable of 100% righteousness. It's not worthy to enter into the kingdom. That's true. But, you know, based on the information we brought out, a flesh and blood is not suitable for the kingdom because again the flesh and blood would be completely tore apart in the kingdom you know partaking in the things that the lord got in store for us they like the chariots and space travel etc on the side point real quick we know two-thirds of our people about to be cut off and then again, flesh and blood cannot enjoy the pleasures of the kingdom. So if two-thirds of our people about to get cut off, well, we got to bring them back in the kingdom. The Lord said he would, he would multiply us as the stars of heaven. So in the kingdom of heaven, there's going to be a lot of childbirth going on. But again, flesh and blood cannot enjoy the pleasures of the kingdom of heaven. So the Israelite men, as we stand right here, right now, we wouldn't be capable of bringing back the two-thirds of our people. It's going to be a lot of childbirth and a lot of baby-making. Us as men, we wouldn't be capable of that right now in these bodies. These bodies got limitations. Hey, but even you women, you women about to be, the, 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 the elect women about to be having a lot of babies. Back to back to back to back. And the woman body right now is not capable of bringing back the two-thirds of our people. The body of the man, the body of the woman, you know, got limitations. You know, women can possibly die from childbirth. But even in childbirth, the woman's body is degraded. Then with the man, you know, testosterone now what it used to be in the ancient world. You know, all kind of limitations with the body with the Lord is going to remove all those limitations in the kingdom so that we can, you know, space travel in those chariots, which create thousands of G-forces, to something as simple as us bringing back our nation through reproduction. So again, um, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High, but also flesh and blood cannot enjoy the pleasures of the kingdom of the Most High. Yeah, so we're going to need a major upgrade on all levels to enter into the kingdom, to enjoy the kingdom. So that was just another little side note, um, random thought, you know, concerning a uh, childbirth in the kingdom. Hey, but Lord, what in those informative and edifying? Until next time, Shalom.